This episode of The Last Drinks Podcast is sponsored by Zekka Skin. Zekka Skin specializes in high-quality men's skincare products that not only benefit the health of your skin, but also support men's mental health. Use discount code LASTDRINKS25 at checkout to get 25% off all Zekka Skin products. And if you wish to support the show, you can now donate via Buy Me A Coffee. That's www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash last drinks. All donations will go to keeping the show running and thriving. We greatly appreciate all the support we've received from our fans and followers. Now sit back and relax and we hope you enjoy this episode of the Last Drinks podcast. I guess this is the Last Drinks podcast. I guess I'm Will Hitchens and I guess this is Mitchell Ford. I think so. <laughs> Yes, welcome. Mitch is back from his year of traveling. Uh, he's making a brief, brief pit stop here before he's off doing um, other things he's doing with your life, which we'll catch up with in a moment. But how are you doing, Mitch? Oh, I'm good. It's good, good to be back. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> uh, after, yeah, after the last six months consistently abroad, it's nice to be back in Australia, mm. have a bed, not have to stay in a hostel. Yeah. Uh, not living out of a bag is nice. It was an incredible, incredible journey, mm. uh, but it's good to be back in Australia. Yeah, because I think, I mean, we parted ways at the start of this year in January, and then I think our last, the last episode we did together, you were in, we were in, you were in Poland, so you were mm. in Krakow, and we were trying to do an episode, and then as soon as we started, um, you had some yes. next door neighbours yes, <laughs> doing some right. doing some handiwork, yeah, and being in a country that. Some speak English, but obviously the native language of Poland is Polish, and I don't know if you if you learnt much Polish while you were there. No, to communicate um, to the uh, the fine handymen of Poland, whether they would be you know continually to do work. What was it? It was on uh, a bathroom or it something. Was yeah, I remember going upstairs and just trying to speak English, and they stared at me like I was a ghost. And then I sort of pointed at my watch and like, what time will you finish? And they just kind of just went back to work. <laughs> so I like, okay, I guess they'll finish when they're ready. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was the last time. And then since then, I went to, after Poland, I went to the Czech Republic. Mm-hmm. And then I went to uh, Berlin briefly for a couple of nights. And then to Belgium for a few nights, uh, Amsterdam for three nights as well. And then caught a bus to London, where I spent about four or five nights, and then went up to the north of England uh, for a few nights, like Manchester, that Mm, kind of area. Yeah. Then quickly back to London, and then flew to Japan, where I spent like the last ten to twelve days. And yeah, I remember. Yeah, like you were, because I mean, for me, you know, when we've been corresponding, it's like you were going to finish in London, and then you'd be back. And then I've opened your story on Instagram one day and it says Tokyo. I'm just like, what, what the fuck's he doing there? <laughs> yeah, look. Yeah, the trip was, uh, it went for about three weeks longer than predicted. Mm. About three and a half weeks. I was supposed to be back at the end of May. It's now the end of June. So, mm. uh, But yeah, I guess, uh, you know, strike while the iron is hot. When yeah. You're over there and you're having fun and you meet people and things are happening. It's hard to, hard to go home. But mm. um, yeah, it's been really amazing. Yeah. Have you ever been to Japan? No, no, I've never been to Japan. What was Japan like? Japan's great. Yeah, mm. it's incredibly clean, uh, like weirdly clean. Like yeah, I've heard like that. Not yeah. one piece of rubbish. It's like most yeah. of it's settling. I've heard that there's no rubbish bins. No, there's You're no bins. You're expected to just yeah. take your rubbish with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's, there's no bins. Um, Tokyo is surprisingly quiet. It's the biggest city in the world. It's like 30 million people or something. Mm. But there's almost hardly any traffic. There's not much noise. It's, uh, it's like whisper quiet. It's a really... A really cool place, and uh, the food is amazing. Uh, the people are super polite. Uh, the public transport's great. So yeah, Japan was was amazing. Mm. Also, like I think I said to you before, I tried some uh, non-alcoholic sake. Yeah, I was at yeah. dinner and everyone was having sake, and I felt all sorry for myself. Uh, but then there on the menu was a non-alcoholic, so I felt really included. Mm. Too bad it tasted like complete shit, but, <laughs> but at least I was included, and I felt like I wasn't being left out of the the alcohol consumption mm. well that's a handy thing because i mean i don't think i've ever even had sake when i was a drinker maybe i did i don't know yeah and i can't really say i'd remember what it tasted like i don't know pure gasoline or something yeah that's yeah. my memory of it just yeah. like uh, pretty pretty strong and pretty harsh mm. this was this was something that obviously off camera in the beginning days of exploring this venture this podcast you'd made mention that look this was something that you wanted to do you wanted mm. to see the world basically because you didn't 
you have you didn't really have the opportunity you kind of I guess you had your period in the army you had period of work you had yep. you in I guess you had certain relationships you had this um you have this house back in in Adelaide and it's done it's done for it's now. done for now <laughs> um what have you been your biggest takeaways from yeah the, the gap year the I'd gap say. year uh the biggest takeaways mm, there's been a lot and to be it's such a long time that there's been dip, been periods which have been really great and and um it's just completely different. Like my time in Europe was so different to my time in India and mm. time in America was so different again. But I guess um, probably some of my overall takeaways we talked before was just that Australia is a pretty amazing country. Mm. I think that's like a, a massive one is just being overseas and uh, especially, you know, parts of Asia and parts of uh, parts of Eastern Europe and even Western Europe, uh, you know, they, they have a lot of problems and challenges that we just – haven't faced or we, we don't face and, mm. we, and we haven't faced um and i don't think that we're always fully grateful or, or aware of it but uh but yeah it's probably like a massive one is that we, we live in kind of like this nice fairly safe bubble economically relatively stable obviously at the moment there's um problems with housing and things mm. but uh rest of the world is facing that too yeah it's, and, and like it's, it's actually a lot worse in some other countries mm. like in london it's 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 horrific and, yeah um yeah, I mean, it, not to say it's it's great here in Australia, but it is really bad elsewhere. And they've also got a lot more political unrest, a lot of crime. Like I, I said to you, I saw a guy get bashed up in, in London, mm. spoke to some people, and they said that's a very common thing, just like daylight assaults, daylight stabbings. And, mm. uh, and then, you know, in France, they have a bunch of that kind of thing happen all the time as well. Mm. So, that, yeah, it's probably like a big takeaway um, is just how great Australia is. Yeah, because that was a lot of, you know, even... You were saying that, yeah, it puts in perspective of, I guess, yeah, like what we've got here. Yeah. And maybe for a lot of people, if they haven't explored outside this country, because, I mean, we are quite isolated Mm -hmm. in a sense, um, to get sort of anywhere that far away is, yeah, like you can can easily be, yeah, sort of caught in your own bubble and focused in on what's going on here to... What's going on in the rest of the world? I mean, you know, I mean, I stopped. I mean, obviously, I, I made a conscious effort. I guess in, I guess during the spicy cough season, to to tune out more and more from the news mm-hmm. because of, I guess, because it's mostly negative. But then I'd have, a, I'd, I'd come out one day, and then my housemate would say to me, "Oh, did they find the submarine?" I'm like, "What? What submarine?" I'm like, "Oh, this, <laughs> this, you know, the obviously this ocean, um, ocean gate, ocean gate." Um, I think submerse it's not even it wasn't a submarine it was a submersible wasn't it yeah i think the technical term that got lot that got but obviously it, 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 it imploded didn't it yeah um looking for the uh, going looking for the titanic with a bunch of um i guess you know it was, it was like there was a couple of billionaires yeah. and then the ceo of the company it was 250,000 US dollars to mm. to go down there yeah isn't that a similar price to Cat, like go on what was it was it v- Richard Branson's spaceship to go mm. up into space I don't know what the price was but uh, I'd feel much safer with Richard yeah I think like because well I guess they both have the both have their risk because I guess the rocket could go up and explode and yeah, then yeah true the, the, yeah would you rather explode or implode <laughs> no nah, I trust Richard Branson <laughs> yeah. he's, he's been around for a while yeah he's been you know I feel like he follows the regulations a bit more yeah, because that was the thing, wasn't it? That there was some. Oh yeah, there was video- there's videos from online being like, oh yeah, they they have told me you can't do this, but hey, here I am doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, ah, oh, shock! It's it's imploded mm. under but, like mass amounts of pressure. It's yeah, like a homemade submersible. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah, because I was just like, what 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 would that look like? Because it's like there's always that fascinating like, what would it look like to just oh. a thing to just implode like I that? I saw a video today, and it kind of just it was of a train carriage experiencing an implosion of less of, of much less force than mm. the submarine and it's just like this huge tanker and then half a second later it's just like yeah like it just completely mm. yeah implodes and so and that was a, apparently like a very small amount of pressure compared to what they predict was experienced so mm. i can imagine it was pretty violent yeah yeah because yeah, like I mean, I mean here, I mean then I yeah. look up on the news and then there's stuff going on in Russia. Yes, which whatever's. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> I mean, I'm not even entirely sure what's you know. It's like are there Russians fighting Russians? But yeah, well, no. I mean, and even with that, like I, I met a girl, a Ukrainian woman in Italy, and she'd moved to Italy once the war had started. So mm-hmm. her, I think her father and her brother had to stay and fight. 
So yeah. she's got out and she was expecting to just be like a month or two. Mm. But it's like a year later. Yeah. She's still there. And trying to talk to her about it. Um, and she's just had to adapt. She's she's learned Italian and she's teaching. Uh, I think she's teaching Italian or, or Ukrainian or so, like basically teaching language in mm. Italy. Um, and, yeah, I guess like meeting her and just like the perspective of that. Mm. Like in Australia we think, you know, we – we do still have problems. Everyone mm. has problems, but like it puts it into perspective of yeah. the level of problems that we have compared to particularly like what's happening in Europe at the moment mm. and also what they've gone through for the last like 100 years as well. It's yeah. just like just insane some of the stuff that a lot of these countries have gone through and, and then like politically they have a lot of wild stuff going on. Like uh, I know in, in, uh, in Hungary they've got like anti-LGBT uh, rules and stuff that they've like legally like they've made it illegal to be gay now and mm. uh, you know which is pretty wild considering <laughs> how far you know, I think we yeah. I, thought we, I thought we've sort of come pretty far but uh, yeah there's it's not everywhere and mm. it's just stuff that we don't really learn about I guess um, like you say the media controls what we want to know but um, yeah a lot of a lot of parts of the world there's still a lot of really messed up stuff happening mm. uh, so that's probably one of the the main takeaways I had from my travels in terms of uh, global insights yeah. I mean, I've mentioned myself about the fact that I have to move out of this place. Uh, well, it'll be just over a month now. Um, still haven't dis- haven't made any sort of solid plans with that. Um, uh, you know, but I can. I'm sure I can string something together last minute. As yeah, <laughs> when there's a will, there's a way. The universe will look after you. Yeah. So, because yeah. yeah, like I guess I didn't record an episode uh, last week. That was the first time I hadn't made anything with this and it was because i had a kind of coming off the edge of a cold but then i've been um because then i've been exploring this other stuff with this other social media stuff that i've been doing which has now kind of taken off quite a bit and then you know it's like okay well this could be something here to work with and then yeah just trying to sort out like i've been applying for work and then looking at places to live so there's a bit on and then like kind of cruising with this a bit to then, all right, can we, can we, where can we redirect, where can we redirect this? Can we keep this going? Can we keep it um, fresh and exciting and engaging for our listeners? Of course. And it was good to do a little, you know, we're doing a little catch up here yeah, um, yeah, to just sure. get the ball back rolling, I guess. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so a big part of, yeah, was, was basically the perspective. Was there anything else you took away from it? Um, I guess I had a lot of time to reflect on my life and, uh, and where I want to personally go. Um, which uh, I was going to announce on the show that I'm moving, actually moving over to Europe, which you know, uh, mm. uh, to, to, to go back to uni, which is something that I've been interested in, in doing and I stumbled across while I was, while I was traveling. And I guess with, uh, you know, with, with not drinking alcohol, I think a huge part of it is finding a direction to go in, finding your why, which is mm. something we've talked about before, yeah. is finding your why, finding your direction, yeah. what's going to guide you through life and and – I'm fortunate enough that I, that I found that. So that's probably a massive, um, a massive learning that I've had whilst traveling. Is is uh, is there's a challenge? It's uh, you know, a five year degree, and it's going to be very difficult because uh, I haven't you know I haven't studied in a long time, and historically, mm. uh, yeah, I sometimes struggle with uh, paying attention and things like that for long periods. So for me, it's, it's something that's going to be very difficult, but I mm. also feel really good about it and I feel like it's going to uh, guide me through the next five years of my life. Mm. Um, and so that's that's obviously been pretty massive for me in mm. terms of, of learning while I've been traveling. Um, and we'll still do episodes while I'm overseas, mm-hmm. but obviously you'll be sort of steering the ship as you have been. Yeah. Um, but which, yeah, it, it obviously sucks because I, I, I do love doing this podcast, but uh, I guess... For me, it's uh, yeah. This this opportunity that's been presented is is something that it feels really right and mm. something that's really going to guide me through my life um, mm. and, and and get me to a place where I want to be professionally. Um, and the final thing that I the final thing I wanted to mention that I learned as well was um, I guess it was to do with uh, an earlier podcast with uh, where I'd done the meditation retreat mm. and I was talking about how. Uh, yeah, meditation is an incredibly powerful thing. And I guess as I've traveled, I've had a lot of time to reflect on uh, on my experience on the meditation retreat and also um, my desire to pursue a goal. Because, you know, you probably remember me talking about the fact that 
kind of like setting goals is kind of against the whole meditation thing. You know, meditation mm. is just about being present and yeah. and not pursuing things. Yeah. Desire is the root of suffering. Mm. And then, but then desiring, and we've talked about, I think I talked about setting wholesome goals. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like this is a, a really, a really wholesome goal. But I also thought about the fact that in life, I guess you can, you can follow the, the monk life or you can follow the life of a man, which is, I guess, more set with, yeah, trying to provide to your community and trying to become the best version of yourself. And I guess that's mm. kind of a decision we all have to make which which path we want to go down. And of course, there's probably somewhere in the middle too. So um, my mindset probably has changed since that meditation retreat um, because, I, because I realized or I thought that, yeah, I've, there's something I want to pursue and it's going to end up being able to help other people and provide to, uh, provide to the community. Mm. And so, yeah, that's, that's been another big yeah. learning while I've been traveling. Mm. I remember some uh, it was somewhere along the lines i guess you were you were looking you were actually considering staying over i think it, you were going to pace yourself in england and then do like the work that you did before mm, and you were yeah. sharing that with me and part of me just thought that well you know and i could see why you do it because you're enjoying the traveling you're enjoying yeah, the experience but course. you know i mean if it would be to say okay but then you would be uh, you'd be back you'd be based somewhere different but you'd be doing the same work you're doing before that you eventually just thought oh well this this isn't the direction i want to go um so i think it's good that you've you know redirected your sales and then found i guess the direction that you want to head in or at least start to explore which is yeah with um going to which you, you, you did share with me uh a while ago that you know this was the direction you wanted to go and I think it's great. I think it's um, it's. I mean, it's it's such a wild thing because like, yeah, we met a year ago. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know, I know. And we're doing all this, and then you know, because I think we were saying before, it's just like, did you did you imagine you know a year ago that this is this is where your life would be no, in a year's time? No, yeah. no, no. Even like even like th- three months ago, if you told me where I was now, I wouldn't believe it. Mm. It's the last year has just been so transformational. And if it wasn't for being sober, it it wouldn't happen. Yeah. You know, like, um, and that's probably my final major learning from traveling is just that you really don't need alcohol to have a good time to live a fulfilling life, mm. honestly. Like, it's really reinforced to me because traveling, you know, beforehand I was so worried about mm. being sober overseas and how am I going to have fun and all these kind of thoughts going through my head. I'm going to be boring at hostels. But it was just the opposite. Like, mm. I I found that it was a lot more enjoyable. I had so much more energy than other people mm. just because, I mean, some a lot of people also didn't drink that much. But, you know, I did meet a bunch of people that, yeah, were getting pissed most nights and I'm sure they were having fun, there's no doubt. But uh, it comes with this, the side effects as we mm. all know what a hangover feels like. And, yeah. and when you're overseas in a hostel, you don't want to feel hungover. Mm. It's pretty horrible. Um, and so, yeah, it's been... It's been fantastic in this direction I'm heading in. Would not be possible unless I, yeah, was sober. Mm. You know, if I, if I was drinking, I wouldn't even be close to the mark. So, um, yeah, it's definitely got me to a place where I'm, I'm quite happy. Like I can I can confidently say where I'm at now is like probably the one of the happiest I've been in my entire life. Um, and that's after going through a period where, yeah, it was pretty dark for, for mm. a long time, you know, drinking and partying which we've talked a lot about in the past yeah. but just going hard and working at you know just being around people that probably aren't good and i've changed my environment i've I've done things that i want to do and i'm pursuing things i want to pursue and and subsequently i'm a lot happier if this if this podcast is a ship and then you know you've got another ship that's like all right we've got to sail into you know i've got to follow the sails i've got to follow the current this way for yep. time being but you know the ship of this podcast is still here um and yeah, I'm just guiding it where it needs to go and where, wherever we're going to explore in the open ocean. Exactly, and, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, even just taking away from your experience where, yeah, obviously there was a lot of worry about, oh, how am I going to do this? And mm-hmm. I mean, for me, I think it's, it's just jumping in. I think it's yeah. just like if you... I certainly think if like, you know, I think for people, if they were going to go overseas sober and they haven't... Like I remember I was talking to a friend recently and she talked to me about a friend of hers who's, she knows that the drinking is affecting her. It's not like bad, but like, like she, you know, it's, it's negatively impacting her, but not like to a, I guess maybe a, a, a red alert extent. But, um, and she was like, oh, well, you know, she, you know, as this time of year, a lot of people are going to Europe, European summer trips. And so it's like, well, or we'll revisit it when she comes, when they come back from Europe. And I was like, yeah, that's probably fair. Cause I just think, 
if you're trying to quit drinking right before you go do something like that, that could be quite difficult. Unless you're, I mean, like with a lot of people, if you're just really fucking determined to do it, we've had plenty of them on here that just, they just made a decision and it stuck with it. Um, but I mean, it can be a difficult thing to transition into, um, especially, yeah, if you don't, ha- if you're going on your own, you don't have a support network around mm-hmm. you and you're going into environments where yeah, really you just got to count on yourself. But I think, you know, you can sit and dwell on it for ages and make it out to be worse in your head and then once you dive in and it could be a bit uncomfortable it could be nerve-wracking you know if you just stick to your guns and just you know say you know if you get offered a drink just say no if you don't oh what you know it's just like oh i'm just i just don't drink yeah yeah and yeah i mean that was that the sort of thing you did was just like yeah i just don't drink and then it's just like oh yeah the the most common interaction i had was positive you Mm. know like i got questioned yeah, I mean, if people found out, they'd say, "Oh, why don't you drink?" And I'd often just say, "I used, to, I used to drink too much," mm. and they go, "Yep, yeah, fair enough." Mm. That was that was kind of it, you know, yeah. for, for the most part. Um, uh, um, some people followed up and asked a couple more questions, but for the most part, it, it's curiosity from people, not so much judgment. They're just mm. curious as to, "Oh, wow, like how do you go traveling and, and that kind of thing without drinking?" It's, mm. it's not like necessarily a judgmental, like, yeah. "Why don't you drink? What's wrong mm. with you?" It's more just curiosity. And um, yeah, it was it was a very positive reaction from most people. And then actually, I played a game on on a few different occasions of I would try and go the whole night without telling anyone. Mm-hmm. And there was one night in my mind that I got away with it. There was three young Aussie blokes, uh, which was really refreshing because I hadn't met many Aussies, and they were like mm. twenty one from Perth, and they were just absolute Aussie larrikins. Mm. Love surfing, love the beers, love footy, like you know, typical typical legends, and. Yeah, we, they were like, oh, we'll come meet you wherever you are. We'll go on a night out. And we, we went out for most of the night and I managed to completely evade them knowing that I don't drink because mm. I would go order after them. I'd order non-alcoholic beers and then went to a cocktail bar and I just ordered like a Coke, mm. and then, you know, it's put in a fancy glass. And they didn't know. Yeah, they didn't yeah. No, and went the whole night, went to a karaoke bar, sang till like two in the morning. Yeah. And these guys never knew. They probably still don't know that. I don't <laughs> so, yeah, you can do that too. It's it's You can disguise it, but... And I didn't do that because I'm ashamed. It was just more of a, f- a fun thing for me. Mm. I just thought, like, this would be fun. Let's yeah. just see if I can get away with not actually saying it. Mm. And you can. Mm. And, uh, yeah, you could, you can do that or just be up front and tell them, yep, I have a problem with the alcohol or I just choose not to drink. And, yeah, honestly, the, it's pretty positive. And the other thing, like, I don't know if it's just me or um, whether it's an Australian thing, but a lot of the people that I met and hung out with, uh, the way that they drank because I would go to dinners and go to nightclubs or karaoke bars and they would be drinking and because I was sober I was able to see how much everyone was drinking and, and the rate that they were drinking at it also made me realise how much of a pisshead I was as well because <laughs> you know most a lot of the people they're having like two drinks over the course of yeah. the night three drinks over the course mm. of the night they're ordering a beer taking like an hour to finish it mm. two hour break order another beer and I'm like what the fuck is wrong with you yeah. like, like why don't you have two why don't, you, why don't you have the third one coming already? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, where's the shots at? Yeah, yeah. Like, what's what the hell? Yeah. What, are, what are you guys doing? Mm. Um, so that was that was another thing uh, I noticed while I was traveling. It's just yeah, like yeah, we're definitely pissheads because I yeah, mean, most people they, they just have a couple of drinks. And, mm. uh, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, and then it's like oh, so that's what it's meant to be like. That's yes. how that's that's drinking responsibly. That's drinking responsibly. Yeah. And I saw it a lot and yeah, it re- because before that I hadn't really seen that. If I'm honest, like working in construction. Uh, you know, with army blokes or with footy footy lads or cricket lads or whichever, you know, I was in all these kind of environments. You don't drink like that. You just no. you get you get pissed. I mean, there maybe there's a couple of guys, but maybe I just never noticed. But for the most part, it's just yeah, let's get shots in, let's get fucking cans of UDL, mm. let's just go nuts, just go nuts, yeah. And that's yeah, like it's just an observant thing. And then yeah, I think I think what I was thinking about before was how we can. I think we I think we just make out in our own heads that it's going to be a lot worse than we think than it ends up being. Yeah, definitely. Cuz yeah, like you were saying, you know, it's more curiosity than it is like judgment. Mm-hmm. Um, cuz yeah, I'm like trying to think in my own time have people had a go at me for not drinking in person and the answer would be no. Mm. They've had a go at me online. Of course. The, yeah. the, they've had a go you, at me online. You long haired, <laughs> beta, whatever they call you. So that's always the interesting thing because, I mean, I was saying on um, that, yeah, like, I mean, I had a video on 
one of the from the clips I think it was from an interview from a, another podcast I did and it was on I th- the clip was talking about you know I was just saying you know would I ever you know people ask me if I'd ever drink again and I just sort of said well what's the point like yeah, yeah. I've kind of done I've, I've kind of completed it you know I've completed yeah. it like a video game and yeah so then you get people who p- people who are angry at you know I'm preaching from a soapbox about sobriety you know I'm preaching this thing that you know turn my life around for the better you know then perhaps perhaps other people could try it out themselves and maybe their their lives might improve i mean it's yeah. i'm not you know i'm not selling it to people i mean i i can the only way i'm selling it is just like i can show you a picture i can show you videos of what i used to be like who i used to be and then who i am now um and the big difference is that, that alcohol is completely out of the picture <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it's a great way to put it and i guess it's just that yeah getting alcohol out of your life will just give you give you clarity for everything else because for me it was so dominant mm. alcohol was such a dom- held so much space in my head rent free you know mm. it was just like i was really concerned about when i was going to get pissed next when can i like can i take this day off so i can go to yeah. this festival and get pissed there like it was always just every, so much revolved around alcohol yeah and when that's the case it's it's not i mean yeah that's annoying in itself but it's also you're missing out on so many other things you could be mm. worrying about what you could be moving towards hobbies you could find and so yeah maybe you don't need to quit forever either maybe you know you're a kind of person you just need need to get it out for you know six months or a year which a lot mm. of people do and and maybe you can work out what you need to work out and go back but uh i mean we often know what happens yeah, yeah, yeah. it depends on the level of alcoholism yeah. that you're at but even if you're someone who just mildly drinks maybe that's good just to have a break and, and clear a few things out in your mind but um yeah, I think that's, that's just such a big thing about going sober. And like, like I know personally with me, the journey I'm going on with, with uni and, uh, and and just the way the gap year has gone, I wouldn't have been able to do it if mm. I was drinking. I would have ran out of money by now. I probably yeah, would have yeah, ran yeah. out of money in the first three yeah, months, yeah, to be yeah. honest. Like, That's the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. always the, the money's money will fucking go as well. Yeah, well, I mean, the music festival in, uh, music festival in London, beers were, I think, eight pounds, which mm. is 16 16 dollars and that yeah. was like just a it's not like a big beer and same with like the one standard drink vodka cans were eight pounds yeah so <laughs> you know 16 dollars per drink mm. you, you have 10 of those it's 160 bucks plus the tickets plus whatever else yeah you can't get pissed on that <laughs> and you can't get pissed on that anyway uh, you know like you're gonna need at least 30 of them yeah because that was i mean i always i mean that when i get the comments from people like that who just it, it just touches a nerve to just which is it's interesting because you think okay well would people who people who don't have a problem with drinking would probably just all right i don't i don't this isn't for me yeah but it's it's i guess if it touches a nerve with people it's it's a funny thing because it's just like well if it if you don't have a problem then this shouldn't bother you yeah exactly that's like a good way to know if you have a problem is like is the thought of not having alcohol in your life does it really upset you Mm. and if it does well you might have and apparently the thought of someone else saying that you know, not having alcohol in your life is great. Touches a nerve with you. Uh, uh, this mate of mine, Jesse, on two weeks ago, you know, he was a heroin addict. It's not like we had heroin addicts going, oh, stop bagging heroin, you fucking pre- heroin, you know. Just, just a bit. Yeah, just a bit, mate. It's Why good you- for you. <laughs> Calms me down, Yeah, you know, keeps me relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> fucking get a bit in you. It's all right, yeah. just don't have too much, you know. Just learn how to but moderate. But yeah, just because... You'd wonder if we'd have this. I mean, if it was an alcohol, if it was yeah, cocaine, was mm. was the was the acceptable drug in our society? Like alcohol is, you know, it's just like oh, just have one line. No, I just you, you've just done too many lines. Just yeah. have the one line. You know, Bloody idiot. Yeah, just oh, it's I a, can just stick to one gram. You idiot. <laughs> oh, what's wrong with you? But yeah, people. That's the thing that people have this attachment to this thing because I mean. Like for us, I mean, it's just this attachment we built from fucking being teenagers all the way through oh, our entire lives. Exactly, and, and it's been, and it is also because it's been in human history for such a long time. Yeah, like Egyptians were bloody drinking alcohol like three thousand years ago. Yeah. So like, <laughs> you know, it's deeply ingrained within our culture, within yeah. within us as human beings. So you know, it makes sense that we're attached. But um, yeah, it's been really powerful. Like you know, I used to have doubts, but now it's just yeah, I feel like I've really shaken. Mm thing off you know yeah. i just feel like uh, i'm headed in a direction that it's just alcohol is not not needed not required not wanted and it feels good it's taken a while to get there not gonna lie you know mm. like we've talked about that a bit is from the 
from the first day that you sort of say, all right, I've got to get sober to, to perhaps where you and I are now, where we're pretty calm. Yeah, it takes a while. Mm. And it normally and it goes up and down and up and down, but it's just being patient, stick with it. Um, if you relapse, drink again, that's okay. Mm. You've got to go through that sometimes and then just get uh, – and then eventually you'll, you'll find your mm. way. Yeah, because I was at a um, – I was at an event on Saturday and there was a lot of old mates and I chatted with a guy and he was asking me, like, he, he he's like, yeah, I went a couple of months off the booze, but then I just had a moment where I guess, I don't know, whatever was going on inside him, just he just went to the drink just yep. to shut it out or whatever. And he was asking me, oh, do you still have that? And like, what do you do? And, you know, it was an interesting question because it's like, yeah, like I still have those moments of those feelings or whatever come up, mm. but, but like it's it's not the desire to drink. It's the it's still the desire. I think there's still the desire to escape. I just like, okay, mm. how do I do it? All right, alcohol. Uh, no, that doesn't work. We can't. We, we we've closed yeah. that door. Like I've just fucking bolted yeah. the door shut. Like that's that's <laughs> done. Like we can't be going back down that road again. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, for me, I mean, sometimes it's just fucking like eating eating too much food until I get sick. Yeah, well, food's a big one. Yeah, food's a big one for a lot of people, I think. Mm. Um, it's actually I listened to a Huberman podcast recently, and he was talking about how food is potentially one of the worst addictions to have because it's not like if someone has a you know big food problem, it's not like if you've got an alcohol problem, you can just stop drinking alcohol. Yeah. If you've got a food problem, you, you can't to, just stop yeah, eating. You have to keep you, eating. You have yeah. to keep eating. So yeah. it'd be like I think he said something like, "It's like giving a gambler ten dollars and saying, all right, you have to go to the casino and still use ten dollars, but you can't spend any more.' Like, yeah. and, and it's like, well, of course, that's raw danger because yeah. once you start and what, yeah, and um, so yeah, food is, is a massive one mm. for a lot of people. Um, yeah, and I personally had um, we talked about this. Uh, I've actually battled with like nicotine as well since mm. quitting uh, uh, quite a lot. Which, uh, yeah, especially while traveling, like I was quite good when I was here, but going overseas, going to hostels and being in Europe, you know, everyone, you know, romantically smokes darts and all that. <laughs> and so I did actually, yeah, I started, I was smoking there for a while. Well, actually, end of last year, I was like vaping and then sort of cut that out and then started smoking again when I got to Europe. And then I sort of stopped and then a mate had a vape and I had some and then I was kind of on the vape again for, mm. for a while. So I've kind of gone through this like seesaw of nicotine, um, but I've now been off it for a couple of weeks, which is nice. And I feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm in the, now that I'm back home, I feel a bit more like it's, it's, mm. it's been done. But yeah, the addiction thing, it's still there for me. Um, and I find that, yeah, I can get hooked on these things. Um, I still have things that I go to, but they're not as destructive. Well, that's the thing, you know, we yeah. talk about, well, because we know, I've, I've said it to somebody where it's just like, we know how, like, I mean, for myself, probably for you as well, like, I know how bad alcohol can get for me. Yeah. And so then to compare it to like overindulging in like sugary food that mm -hmm. just, I don't know, makes me feel full and sick, then there's like, oh, that's whatever. Like, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all, <laughs> all good. To, all, to, all to stop whatever it is that I'm not sure how to process and feel and whatever but um yeah like i'm not i'm not shitting the bed and fucking <laughs> well exactly that's right i mean what yeah that's it it's it's literally yeah pick your poison and there's some worse than others like my mine at the moment is i've become really addicted to playing chess on my phone chess online which is like <laughs> so ridiculous so i can just sit there for like two hours just like intensely playing chess but yeah, it's better than it's better than picking up a cigarette or picking up a drink. So uh, yeah, I'm quite happy to be doing something that's less destructive. And yeah, whether it's a video game or uh, food, yeah, look, it's not great. And eventually, mm. you do want to, you know, obviously, all of us would like to be eating fairly healthy and uh, you know, not spending too much time on our phones and things like that. But if you've recently quit drinking or you've quit drugs or quit smoke, like if if you need to sort of channel a little bit and you need to eat a chocolate bar because you're mm. going to have a you're about to have a meltdown yeah and you you know and eating a chocolate bar is going to make you feel better then i think it's much better to just have the chocolate bar yeah yeah and just get through you know mm. like because it's a lot less destructive well, i mean i had that when i was yeah coming off the booze and rehab like i had a phase of just i don't know it was just sugar cravings i mean that was a big mm. cuz like i was drinking a lot of i was drinking a lot of like regular coke sprite Shit, yeah. Um, yeah, and then and then eventually I got back out, and then I was eating like I mean you saw we we got 
I got a couple of crunchy bars. Oh. That were the crunchy bars were always a, the. Yeah, I, the, I noticed they disappeared pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought it, I thought it might have been one for me, one for you. I was like, oh, he's bought me a chocolate bar. <laughs> <laughs> they were gone in they, twenty seconds. Yeah. Um, but I get, so I had a period. I get yeah, yeah I, get I, had, I had a period like that, and then I eventually, I eventually. That's when I eventually swapped to bananas. But then nice. I was eating like fucking i'd have i'd be eating like six seven eight bananas a day really yeah <laughs> what was that like it's just fucking peter siddle over here <laughs> eating eight bananas potassium galore inferior potassium yeah so um what it, how did you actually feel after eating eight bananas i want to i wouldn't I be like this. i'll be like i think like throughout the day i don't know if i'd i think oh. like because i'd have two chocolate bars i'm like all right we'll have two bananas instead yeah but yeah then i would be I don't know, then it'd be like in the evening, if it was like, all right, breakfast, like if like bananas became dessert, basically. Ah. So it's like, I don't know if it was six to eight. So if it was like two bananas in the morning, two bananas at lunch, mm. two bananas in the evening, but then it'd be like, then what if I just still feel hungry and then just keep eating? What were your guts like? Was it, <laughs> <laughs> you remember? No. I'd love to know. <laughs> well, how so I, like, like, I got some bananas over there. Maybe we, we should it. eat eight bananas each yeah. and then see how we, see how we feel. Yeah. Always. Oh, hey, look, that's a good addiction, though. If you need to swap to a fruit addiction, look. Fruit addiction. Oh, there's this, this video that I wanted to try out. I wanted to see if it worked. This 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 um, this um ex-porn star was talking about his boner shake. Wow. What? His it, boner shake? So, basically, this he, he would have four raw eggs and a, and a scoop of protein in, and then have that before he went to bed and then woke up the next morning and that apparently gives him the, the, really? stiff, the stiff he needs for work. Oh, <laughs> wait, porn stars are working in the morning? Yeah. God, that would be so weird. The I alarm that, goes off. Yeah. Beep, 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 beep. You know, it's one, it's one of those things right, on the internet. It's time to go. Yeah. It's one of those things on the internet where you're just like, oh, is that true? Well, let's say yeah, I'd yeah. probably do it and then like my fucking dick would explode or something. <laughs> <laughs> it could have got to hospital. <laughs> But yeah, uh, if they want to try that out, I'm th- I'll I'll try it out at some point. Four so, eggs, four, four eggs, and fucking vanilla protein, something to do with all the cholesterol or something. I wonder, yeah. I wonder what time they do film porn. Do you think it's morning or do you think it varies? I think I feel, morning would be it'd be too much. Imagine going in eight nine o'clock in the morning. All right, close off time to get to it. I wouldn't be ready. I wouldn't. No. Don't you think? Or well, I mean, it's, you know, you got to remember it's a job. It's a professional setup. Yeah, well, a lot. I, of, so. I mean, a lot of them are. I don't know. Um, you know, and if you want to get, if you want to literally bang out a couple of scenes in the day, I, I mean, so. I don't know if it, like, I wonder if they do like a couple of scenes, a da- like, I mean, like the men, like the men have got, because mm. there's also usually, there's like a talent of men, like there's always lots of women, but yes. there's usually like they, they have a, a couple of guys that, because I guess getting a guy that can do the job. Yeah, true. As seems to be more of a. A magician. Yeah, to find guys that can do the job. Yep. You know, it's like, all right, he can do the job. All right, well, we'll use him. Mm. So it's like, all right, well, you need to fucking bang it out three times a day for... <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Poor well, I mean, that's guy. where you hear about stuff. Like, I mean, they, a lot of them take a lot of them take Viagra and do like all sorts of things to just, just keep the, the engine running. <laughs> yeah, wow. Got to be such a weird feeling just driving in traffic. Like everyone's off mm. to their office jobs and you're just... Off to have sex with somebody <laughs> random, some random place. <laughs> off to work. After my with my giant erection after yeah. four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> what am I today? I'm, am I the pizza delivery guy? Am I the yeah. fireman? Am hey. I the plumber? Am I the pool boy? Am I the astronaut? Am I the doctor? <laughs> the astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> I love seeing astronaut scene. That's something else. Wow. Yeah, I wonder if it yeah, I wonder if they've That's an idea. Maybe yeah, we can if, if there's zero gravity. Um, oh, porn! Now we're talking. <laughs> now we are talking. Well, we shouldn't be, prom- you know, porn. Porn's a bad addiction as well. So. Well, it is. Yeah, it is. It's 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 all the it's all the same shit, really. Isn't yeah. It? If you look at food, you look at cigarettes, porn, gaming. It's all the same shit. Mm. It's a distraction from our emotions. Yeah. Because we like to stuff them down. <laughs> and we like to just not look at them. Yeah. Um. But yes, it's all the same shit. Yeah. So I guess it- that's just. Yeah. And like, oh, we need to process them. Okay, I've processed them. Now what? <laughs> More emotions come in. Oh, well, does do they end? No, they just keep coming and coming and coming and coming and yeah. coming and coming. Just like sex workers yeah, just- do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. Nice, Will. Um, <laughs> so this has been all over the place, obviously, but that's that's good. Yeah, I think a good, good conversation like that. Um, 
Do you have any final words you want to leave us with for this episode, Mitch? I guess if I have any final words, my final words are uh, to all of our listeners, thank you very much for listening. Obviously, it's been amazing watching the podcast grow while I've been overseas and watching you do all your hard work. And mm. I guess, yeah, the message is to just, yeah, stay off, stay off the booze. Um, keep, just keep pushing through. That'll be my advice: is just to keep getting through life without drinking because it uh, it is really good at the other side. Mm. And even if yeah, like you're going through rough spots, like it is yeah, just keep pushing through because that moment will pass and you'll come out the other side. Yes. And you yeah, you won't regret it because yeah, you get out the other side and then you look at it and you go like, oh, I'm so glad I got through it. Yes. I didn't I didn't succumb to to going back out. Yeah. And. And then, yeah, even just with, because not to be hard on yourself with with slipping up, because, I mean, just, you know, it happens. It's happened yeah. with you. It's happened with me. Yep. You just don't make it. You, certainly just don't make it a habit of it like I did for six months. I mean, that's kind of, yeah. um, but I think the way that obviously where I was at was not, um, I wasn't in the headset that I am in now where, um yeah, I'd probably be in a better place to be like, all right, we need to shut it off. Yeah. But I'm just not turning it back on again. So. Yes, exactly. And I think I was, because I was asked, I guess, with this, you know, I guess with, with this sort of thing that we're doing, it's like, you know, you know, what what is it for? You know, what could it be for? What could, it, what could the purpose be for it? And I just thought, I'd wonder if I had this podcast access to the information that we're now um, sharing all the other stuff that's on around there like if i'm doing this for the the for most myself in my mid-20s that guy that was drinking heavily excessively um who was even starting to because i do remember like i was starting to explore like i mean a lot of it was just looking at celebrities who'd gotten sober like that was i used to watch a lot of stuff like robin williams who you know got sober and um i remember bradley cooper was another one Mm. and um like i mean robert danny jr who's like the finest example i mean the fact that robert danny jr for most people will know him as iron man like the people like our past our generation will only know him as iron man but there's a generation of people who knew him as just he was just a complete like out of control drug and alcohol mm-hmm. and alcoholic and he went to jail and completely flipped it around and he's at an, an inspiring sort of turnaround to where like he's one of the most you know profitable hollywood movie actors um but yeah like what and then just them talking about just their experiences and you know that was kind of there was some sort of inspiration in that but i guess there's always in that head just like oh i don't know if i can do it looking up AA meetings and thinking, yeah, I've looked up AA meetings now, I'll go to the bottle shop instead. Yeah. <laughs> yep. um, so yeah, like back to this, like if I had, you know, if there's stuff like this around to listen to, and I think even just like, because what the feedback I've had from several people is just like, it's what they liked was it's just people, which I like as well. I like that it's just you know, not to, because I've always trying to figure out how to say it where it's not sounding rude, but like, I like people. Like, I like that it's just such and such does this, does this. It's nothing, yep. um, you know, the, the grand scheme of things. It's the average Aussie battle. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's where, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, this story sounds similar to mine. Yeah. And this is what they're doing. Oh, maybe yeah. I could do it too. Exactly. And I guess that's the thing we've always wanted is to make people listening realize that you're not alone. Mm. You know, whatever you've done or whatever you're addicted to or whatever self-limiting beliefs you have, you know, if you think that if you quit drinking and have no friends and you're going to be, you're not funny anymore and you're going to be boring and you're going to live a boring life and it's all going to be doom and gloom, you're not the first person to have those conceptions. Mm. You're not the, you know, like we've all gone through that. And, uh, and so, yeah, that's what we're trying to unveil is that yes yeah, it's, it's normal to have those beliefs and or, or to make mistakes like we've talked about fucked up stories yeah shitting beds pissing beds <laughs> assaulting people <laughs> you know like whatever it may be you know it happens yeah. to the best of us mm. and uh it's okay just keep going and uh yeah we love you mm. well most of you not all of you <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I have commitment issues now. <laughs> but absolutely, yeah. It's yeah. um. Well, it's it's a pleasure for you to join me again. Yes. Uh, once again, and um, it's been a lovely little catch up. So thank you yeah. for joining me again, Mitchell. And I'm sure we'll be doing more while we can. Yes. In between your next adventure. Yes. As you sail off. Into the sunset. Into the sunset. (laughs) I think we'll leave it at that. This has been the Last Drinks Podcast. I'm Will Hitchens. That's Mitchell Ford. And we'll see you in the next one. Nice.